Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from in the world, and welcome to another of our ARM Tech Talks. It's great to have you wherever you're joining us from. Today, we're going to be talking about getting started with Matter. We've got a great tech talk from Spark Fun and Silicon Labs. If you've not joined any of these tech talks before, this is the place for the latest in trends, technologies, and best practices from ARM and our ecosystem. These tech talks have been, uh, been as, as I mentioned last week, if you joined last week, uh, we've been running these previously as an AI series, and we used to do these twice, uh, twice a month. We're now really excited to have these as ARM tech talks focused on the latest, not just in AI, but the Internet of Things, consumer technology, automotive, infrastructure, and so much more. And to be doing this on a weekly basis, live streamed on ARM YouTube, and also for those folks joining us here on Zoom. It's great to have you, and we're really, really excited to be talking about this. So these tech talks, you can get involved in a whole bunch of ways. Uh, you can tweet us, use the hashtag ARM tech talks to do so. We'd love to hear from you. All of these tech talks are live streamed, as I mentioned, to YouTube and available immediately on demand. So you can go and check them out. There's well over 50 of these now uh, since we've been doing these over the last two years. So there's the whole there's a whole bunch of topics that you can go and find out about there. And if you like what you find uh, today and this is your first time to a tech talk and you think oh, I'd love to sign up for another one of these, then you can do so at arm.com slash tech talks. Uh, they're all there. We've got a bunch of really exciting topics coming up. Uh, so let's have a look at those. Let's see what's coming up uh, on the next slide. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about all things matter with Spark Fun and Silicon Labs. I'm really, really excited about what they've got lined up today. Uh, next week, we're going to be heading over to the world of AI streaming analytics uh, and our partner Stream Analyze talking about that. It's a really interesting topic. So do make sure you register for that. I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Uh, and February the 7th, so a week later, we're going to be hearing from Arm and Canonical uh, yes, again about Matter. So if you like all things Matter, make sure you attend that tech talk because uh, that's going to feature a really exciting demo uh, from the ARM and Canonical teams uh, on Matter and ARM virtual hardware. So let's get to today. We've got a really exciting tech talk about how you can get started with Matter, featuring the Things Plus Matter from Spark Fun, collaborating together with Silicon Labs. Uh, it's a really exciting tech talk, so I hope you're excited as I am. Before I do hand over, if you've got any questions at any point during today's tech talk, then please use the Zoom Q&A box down in the menu below, uh, and we'll get to those at the end. Uh, we've got a really exciting bit of content and a demo today featuring Matter in Action. So get your questions lined up. We've got a lot of people attending today. It's really great to see all of you here, and uh, I'll do my best to get through as many questions as we can at the end. So make sure you get your questions in. Hit the little thumbs up if you like that question and want to make sure it gets asked first, uh, and I'll make sure we get to those at the end. So I'm going to hand over now to Matt and Kirk from Silicon Labs and Spark Fund, respectively, who are today's speakers. Guys, it's great to have you. Really, really excited that you could join today's ARM Tech Talk. And I'm going to hand over to you now and let you introduce yourselves and uh, kick off with today's demo. So, um, Kirk, I think you guys are, are going to go first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Or I, maybe I should just say Happy Tuesday, because this is a worldwide stream. Um, Kirk Pinnell from Spark Fund here in Colorado. Um, we're excited to be here. We always love to, to join the ARM Tech Talks and the previous IoT uh, or the AI tech Technology <clears throat> Talks. And, and really excited to be here with uh, Silicon Labs, uh, who's been a great partner on this project, um, developing a, a new board, which I actually, they gave me one to show today. So, uh, you know, uh, as CTO, I get, get all the toys early at Sparkman. But excited to be here, excited about this uh, technology and what ARM and Silicon Labs is bringing into this matter IoT space and uh should be a great uh presentation today all right thanks kirk i'll introduce myself um i'm matt maupin i'm a senior product manager here at silicon labs and i run a team that's responsible for sort of enablement on the 80 top 15.4 uh and zigbee as well as bluetooth so we're going to talk about matter today uh, so if we step through the agenda, obviously, you know, we're here to talk about Matter and the new Spark Fun board. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the hardware that that board is based on. Uh, we'll look a little bit more in details on that, and then we'll have a demo uh, to run through. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right into this. So 
if you're not aware of Silicon Labs, we're, we're a leader in IoT wireless connectivity. Um, you know, we're 100% focused on the IoT. And this is sort of an interesting development. If you look here along the uh, bottom of that, you'll see a number of acquisitions uh, from 2012 through that have all been on wireless, uh, whether wireless or MCUs, but really focused on the IoT. I actually joined uh, Silicon Labs right after the Ember acquisition, uh, mainly because I saw their commitment to wireless. I was doing wireless at another company and really liked what I saw. And over the years, you know, we've been acquiring companies and divesting other areas that weren't IoT and were 100% focused, which is great now. We're number one in mesh, uh, first to market in several technologies like multi-protocol. And of course, our focus is on innovation. Uh, so, Kirk, if you want to give a background. Absolutely. I was on mute. I, you know, I, all these years, I still can't figure out what the mute button is. Um, Smartphone Electronics, you know, we design and manufacture engineering tools and technologies to really allow people to understand the new <clears> technologies <throat> and capabilities in the market. So we bring in easy to follow um, documentation, easy to follow software, and easy to use and inexpensive hardware for people to say, hey, how does this matter thing work? Well, let's go and, and get a board from Smartphone and the tools from Silicon Labs, for example. So we make experimenting easy and give what we like to see time and speed to our customers so they can focus on the job they need to do. And you know, what this project we're talking about today is a really a strong collaboration between Silicon Labs and SparkFun Electronics. You know, we, we connected last year, early last year, um, and actually ARM helped make that connection. And work together and you know discussed how can we bring this new matter technology to kind of the the, the maker or engineer um, market using like a SparkFun platform, a thing plus uh, board format. So it's been a great experience. Um, we're incredibly excited about this relationship and the products we're bringing to the market, and really excited about where matter goes. You know we've all been around IoT for so long, but to see matter and matter solutions available today and bringing all that unified together. Uh, with the technology from ARM and Silicon Labs. is just exciting. And we're, we're really excited to be here today. All right, well, thanks, appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna step through this. And one thing you'll notice as I go through this, I do like to try to talk a little bit about my own experiences with this. I have over 60 uh, IoT devices in my house. They range a variety of technologies, both Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, ZigBee, as well as Bluetooth. And so a lot of it, I'll, I'll sort of talk about my own uh, experiences with this. And before I jump into this, I did want to talk a little bit about sort of matter and what's been going on. I think we all realize it's been getting a lot of attention uh, lately, especially since the 1.0 release in October of last year. And honestly, there's been an unprecedented adoption from manufacturers, and we have over 500 products that have gone through certification in that short amount of time, which is just, is, I've been in doing this for, you know, over a decade and never seen anything with that kind of scale. Um, but why all the excitement around matter? And so really what I wanted to do is sort of give you an example of an experience a consumer may have that will set this up. You know, one of the best examples I think for me is going into a home improvement store here in the US and look for a connected lock. And you can go to one and you will see a shelf of numerous connected locks. And it's difficult because a lot of the connected locks will look exactly the same, but the technology is different. So I'll have the same lock from Slag that supports Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or Zigbee or Z-Wave. So, you know, the only difference is the technology. So as a consumer, you know, how do I know what to pick? As a, uh, you know, a manufacturer, you know, which one do I know to build? And as a retailer, which one to stock? And that's really the dilemma that Matter is working on solving. So, you know, if we look at this first from a manufacturer standpoint, Again, today, if we look at what they're doing, they're they're focusing on meeting a lot of the needs across multiple ecosystems. So as, as I mentioned, you can go to Slag Locks and they have devices that are for Apple, devices for Amazon or Google. There may be Wi-Fi devices. And so really what this means is they end up having to develop and ship a lot of devices. Um, which, you know, costs them money, obviously, and it allows, doesn't really allow them to focus on innovation. And that's really where Matter is coming in for the, uh, the developer. It's allowing them to really focus on a single SKU for Matter, which lowers their development and operation costs 
and it allows them more time for product innovation versus duplicating effort on wireless ecosystems. And then for the retailers, you know, I think the issue is obvious as well. You know, if, again, you go out there, they have to stock more products that are often duplicates as far as features other than wireless technologies. And this is actually shown to lead to higher rates of returns due to interoperability issues or incompatibility from consumers. Um, it also makes it more difficult to provide advice to consumers questions because you may not know exactly what they have. So matter for the retailer is really simplifying things by requiring less shelf space, lowering inventory and carrying costs, and minimizing returns. And then, of course, consumer. This is really what it's about. It's about the consumer experience, because if the consumers aren't happy, they're not going to buy these products. And of course, nobody's going to be successful. And again, looking at the situation today, you know, this causes a lot of confusion when you go in. Um, there was a survey on this that basically indicated that 36% of consumers experienced difficulty during setup, reducing purchasing confidence, and increasing returns. So even if they're knowledgeable the fact that there's different ecosystems may limit what product to buy. For example, maybe I want one specific vendor, but they don't support my ecosystem. Matter is going to simplify that by working with multiple ecosystems, simplifying the purchasing experience, and providing a better user experience. So let's talk a little bit about what Matter is and how it is addressing these issues and needs from the previous slides. Well, Matter is obviously a specification. It is an application layer, and I'll talk more about how it fits in for there. But it is developed by over 280 industry-leading companies, and they're really representing all aspects of the supply chain. And what I mean by that, you know, we have semiconductor companies like uh, Silicon Labs in there. We have product manufacturers like Slag. And most importantly, we have the major ecosystems that are involved in helping to drive this, because really that's what the consumer is going to look at. You know, is this going to work with my Alexa? Is this going to work with my Google Home? Is this going to work with my Samsung smart things? So that's really sort of the key here. And they're all behind it as well. So all of this is going to help ensure that, you know, there's success in the specification, but also that the spe specification is covers a lot of aspects and is open and uh, very well written. The other thing is from the key, it's focused on simplicity. You know, one of the things we're going to talk about a little bit is how you use Bluetooth to actually commission a device on. If you had some experience with devices in the past, depending on what uh, protocol they are, there could be everything from a QR code to having to push a button to having to punt, uh, put in numbers, et cetera. The fact that the, some, uh, the commissioning is done with Bluetooth and everybody has Bluetooth on their phone really makes it simple and secure. Also, interoperability is obviously key. The fact that we have this multi-system uh, ecosystem. So I could buy a device that's matter-enabled, and it will work on an ecosystem from Amazon, an ecosystem from Google, an ecosystem from Apple. As they roll out support for matter, it'll work on either of them or any of these. In fact, it could actually work on both. So one of the issues I have today is I do have different ecosystems in my house. So, you know, maybe my bulbs can't be controlled by my smart uh, things app because I have a different hub. Um, so this is going to help resolve that as well and really allow the user to sort of pick their ecosystem of uh, choice for control as well as their application. And then, of course, uh, it's designed to be reliable. Um, you know, one of the things that's nice about this, if does, if they, they want to enable it, is you can have local connectivity if the internet goes out. So if the internet goes out, you can still control your local devices. Um, and of course, you know, it's built on technologies like Wi-Fi and uh, Thread, which have been around a while and have proven to been, uh, be reliable wireless technologies. And then, of course, security. This is really a big aspect, and this is one of the areas that was built from the ground up. A lot of the other protocols may have been, you know, designed years ago before security was that big of a concern. And during development, they were also concerned about security is the fact that the more secure things are, the harder it is to have easy use and interoperability in general. But matters really started this as the foundation to make it very easy and secure. So you know that devices that join the network are authentic devices and everything is going to be secure. And then finally, it is an open spec, really allowing for more input and innovation. 
Um, so and as you know, we had we it's open it up. It is open source. We'll talk a little bit about how you can get it through GitHub, and the fact also that it is IP based, um, which I'll talk about in the next slide. That really opens it up and makes it uh, you know a more secure environment as well. So talk a little bit about the network topology that's actually behind matter. Um, you know, there's several things here. If you look at the block diagram, really what you'll see is matter is just the, the top level that's really focused on the application. And it's relying on network uh, protocols below that that have been around for a while that are secure and robust, and more importantly, that are IP based. And this really allows everything to communicate well. So, you know, from Excuse me, for Matter 1.0, it does have native support for both Wi-Fi and Thread. And, you know, Thread devices will connect through border routers. So here, you know, you have a Thread network. I have a border router. All it's really doing is converting from a six low pan IP address, a compressed IPv6 address, to IPv6 regular. Um, and so it's not doing any complex, you know, gateway or, or anything like that. It's very simple. It's just simply a router. And then you also have, as I mentioned, Bluetooth commissioning. So we do have Bluetooth down in this block diagram. It's for commissioning only today, but again, does allow very simple commissioning on to the network. And the other thing that they also realize is, you know, there is a lot of networks out there that are already installed. So you don't want to strand users. That's not a good user experience. I'm not going to go through my house and replace all those 60 devices with Matter devices. What I want to do is start bringing them into the network. And that is actually done through what they call bridges. And so what I could have is, for example, I could have a Zigbee to Matter bridge or a Z-Wave to Matter Bridge. And I could take my existing network and actually bridge it on to the thread, or excuse me, to the Matter network and control it. So this is an important aspect of uh, Matter as well. But I do want to talk a little bit about it. This is 1.0 spec. Um, so before you jump on the bandwagon, you have to understand really what devices are supported because that's really critical as you start to look at this. Are the devices that I need supported in a 1.0 spec? If not, how do I get them in there? And so really, I'm going to break this down into line powered and battery powered. There's a number of ways you can do it, but that sort of tells you what type of technologies you need or maybe what the chipset is. The chipset more optimized for battery uh, power or, you know, is that not as important? And I can go with something that has more throughput, for example. So if I do look at these devices, um, what we see first from a line powered standpoint, you see your typical lighting and electrical devices. So these include devices like lights, LED bulbs, it could be you know uh, overhead lights, smart plugs, outlets, pumps, and even fans. And then what's sort of new with this is you do have media devices that are already out there. And, and you've already seen some announcements at CES from companies like Samsung on this. But you'll see TVs, set-top boxes, streaming devices, and even voice assistants. Um, and these devices can actually often work both as a commissioner <clears throat> as well as border routers or other devices in the network. So they may have multifunctionalities. And then finally, you have the more dedicated controllers and bridges that you typically expect to see. <clears throat> For battery powered devices, there's actually a, a large number of devices on here. Um, your first one is sort of HVAC controls. And then we think of things like thermostats, which is pretty typical on something like that. You also have um, you know, door locks, entry devices, and mainly that's door locks and keypads. Window coverings, including things like blinds and shades. And finally, a very large number of sensors that are available. So I have sensors, including contact sensors, light sensors, temperature sensors, occupancy sensors, pressure sensors, humidity, and even flow sensors. And all of these devices are outlined in the specification, which is public and available. So you can go to the CSA, IoT, uh, or website and actually download that and look at all the different device types and what they're supporting. Beyond that, you have some other things uh, such as uh, network components. So you have things like the platform, uh, the mesh extender, think of that as like a, a router, border router, and then home gateways. And then you also have uh, device roles. So these are roles that a device um, 
can operate on. So typically you have just a standard device. You could have a device that can commission onto the network. This could be a dedicated device or it could be another device like maybe a media device that has that capability. You have controllers which control other devices. Perfect example of this is if I had a battery powered switch that controlled LED lights. <clears throat> that switch is a device, but it is also a controller. And then you also have, as I talked about, bridge devices that can bridge over to other network uh, technologies. So these are the devices that are defined in 1.0. Um, they're working on, the Matter Group is working on making sure they have regular updates to the spec to bring in uh, new devices. So, um, you know, basically if your device isn't supported, you'd have to develop it on your own, which isn't ideal because you're not gonna have interoperability. But if you're in a walled garden, that could be fine. Or you could get involved with the organization and actually input um, your specification to try to get these device types adopted. In general, what I'm hearing is they're gonna try to have a specification release every six months to roll out new device types to expand you know, the capabilities of matter. <clears throat> so, you know, what is Silicon Labs doing about this? Well, obviously, you know, we're a semiconductor provider, but for us, it's more than just silicon. And I'll talk through this on what we're doing, but we definitely take a solution approach as we look into this. Obviously, it starts with our hardware. Um, you know, we have field proven SOCs, um, so field proven ICs and both and modules as well for both Wi Fi and 802.15.4. 802.15.4 is the foundation for threads. So when we talk 802.15.4, it's the same as thread in this. Um, we also have best in class radio performance. That's one of our unique areas on here is we wanna make sure that that connection is reliable. And so we really focus on having, you know, things like high output power, high sensitivity, good blocking capability. So we make sure that, you know, packets are getting through. And we also go beyond that and we look at including key features. For example, we have what we call secure vault which is a very high end security. And it's really focused on protecting not only the data over the air, but also the IP on the chip. So we focus on both protecting everything from both remote as well as local attacks. If somebody were to try to get access to your keys, we could detect a tamper and we could do everything from resetting the device to completely bricking the device, depending on what you wanted to do and at the application level. And we also offer things like AI ML. What that is, is machine learning at the edge. So one of the things we're starting to see is more and more intelligence is going to the edge. As we get all these devices out, if I'm doing uh, a lot of information collecting and sending that all the time up to the cloud to sort of figure out what to respond to, that's gonna generate a lot of traffic. And you're starting to see machine learning coming down to the edge where the, the device, edge device can analyze that data and determine, you know, just ignore it. Um, do I react to it or do I send that data up? A perfect example is things like predictive maintenance or glass break detectors. You know, you can glass break detectors and predictive maintenance, um, things like that. You could do a lot of that at the edge and you don't have to send that information to the cloud to be processed. And of course, Software is the next key thing. So obviously, you know, we have a lot of software. We do Zigbee, we do Bluetooth, we do Z-Wave, but we obviously do Matter as well. And, you know, we're gonna provide the complete protocol stack from the physical layer all the way up to Matter. And we provide this both by following, uh, supporting the GitHub. So there's GitHub where you can get this. We also provide our own Silicon Labs Matter GitHub where we've taken that code and actually gone through more testing and QA to make sure that it's solid and robust for our customers. And then we even go a step further and we actually take that and we now have that integrated uh, today for uh, Matter Over Thread in our Simplicity Studio. And if you're not familiar with Simplicity Studio, that is our IDE that we really do um, all, everything you need for development can be done in there. And it's really a nice tool. It provides a nice graphical environment for you to actually load code bases. You can make changes through a GUI configuration. Um, and then when you're ready, you basically build the code base and you can start your development. The beautiful thing about the SparkFun board we're gonna talk about is it has direct integration into these tools. So as you're developing, you're gonna be able to pull up our Simplicity Studio, plug in the board and it will be identified and you could start with your development from there. So really simplifies how you're gonna to get to market. And then finally, 
from the certification standpoint, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we have a lot of experiences in this and we could definitely help you along your way. One of the things is we do certification for thread and Wi-Fi, and that certification can be inherited uh, for uh, the matter certification that is done because you need that as part of matter. And then we have proven matter certification. We already have the platforms that have gone through uh, certification. And of course, we've worked with multiple ecosystem partners to go through this as well. So let's jump into the device we're gonna look at today with the Spark Fun Board. This is our MG24 SOC, our, and we also have the MG240P or the 240S module. And so really this family of parts was really designed with matter in mind um, from the ground up. And one of the things we did is obviously it is multi-protocol. So for these devices, when you have a Wi-Fi device or a matter device, or um, excuse me, our thread device, you typically want them to have Bluetooth in them. So they could also be used for commissioning purposes. And we do support multi-protocol for that. We also have a significant amount of flash and RAM on this. You know, Matter is IP based, it is an application layer. So it is a little heavier than some of the other protocols that were, were previous things like ZigBee or Z-Wave. But you know, the reason for that is to give you that IP and all that interoperability. So we do have 1.5 mega flash, 256K RAM, which is plenty to run uh, the uh, for Matter over thread, plenty to run the protocol, the application, and even have your over-the-air update image on the chip. And then, of course, we talked about Secure Vault. This is critical to make sure that it's meeting all the requirements of Matter, but we also go beyond that as well. So you can make sure you have the highest secure device out there, and we support PSA certification level three. We do provide high-performance RF and reliable communication. I'll talk about that in the next slide. <clears throat> and, of course, we have very low active current for long battery life. I already talked about AI ML accelerator. Um, that's something that we do. And again, as this comes down to the edge, what you wanna make sure is that you're reducing the power required to do this and then the, the time needed to do it. You don't wanna be using a lot of compute cycles to do this and then starve uh, your device for other things. The other nice thing about this device, which is unique on a class of device like this, is it does have a 20-bit ADC that's capable of 16 bits of ENOB. And this is one we're already seeing our customers start to implement because there's things they can do with that type of accuracy that they wouldn't do before because of the expense of adding a you know dedicated front end module for that. Um, so with this, they can do this capability and add functionality to their device to actually increase the value. And we're already seeing that with several of our customers implementing that. So a couple more slides here before we turn it over to Kirk. Um, you know, I did want to talk a little bit specifically about the modules since the MG24, MGM240P is the device that is on the SparkFun board. These are certified modules. What that means for you is you don't have to go through certification on your design. Uh, you put these modules down and you basically just have to file, but you don't have to worry about all the RF design and testing. And they have all the major certifications like FCC, IC, CE, UK, CA, uh, MIC, and, and Korea as well. <clears throat> And we have a couple different modules. The one on the board is the PCB module. That's probably the most popular one. Um, it's your typical module, all self-contained antenna on it. You just put it down on your design. And we do have a SIP module. This is a very small uh, device, looks like a chip, but it is a module with everything integrated in it with the same certifications. On, on a class of this device with this much flash, RAM, et cetera, this is the smallest SIP device that is on the market. And then, of course, you know, I talked about a high performance RF, and this is something that, you know, I'm personally proud of, you know, I like, uh, this has always been important to me, and I appreciate what it takes to design this in. Our devices, depending on what device you get, we have different OPNs, can support up to almost 20 dBm of output power. So in the PCB module, it's 19.9. And from a sensitivity standpoint, for, uh, for example, for 802.15.4, again, which is thread, we support minus 106 sensitivity. So, you know, typically if you look at other devices on the market, to get 20 dBm and 106 sensitivity, you're gonna have to use a front end module. So a PA and LNA on the device, which obviously adds size, cost and power. So you know, the fact that we could do this integrated on chip is, is actually great. Very good BLE sensitivity on this as well. 
It is an ARM Cortex M33 capable of running at 78 megahertz. These are embedded devices. Um, so, you know, they're not an MPU. We're not trying to do a lot of uh, compute power, but for the devices that we talked about, the sensors, door locks, et cetera, um, it has the capability that it needs. It is very low power with transmit and receive current, both coming in under uh, five milliamps and sleep current very low as well. When you talk about a battery powered device, sleep is where you're gonna use the majority of your current consumption. So it's important that not only you have low sleep current, but you can come out of that sleep mode very quick, do what you need to do over the air and go back to sleep. And then finally, a very robust set of peripherals, um, serial ports, we talked about the ADC, uh, temperature sensors, et cetera. And then sort of to wrap up my part, you know, we are focusing on the module on this device uh, with the SparkFun board. And, and why would you want to go a module? Well, there's a number of reasons. One of them is, you know, these are smaller in size. For example, for me to even do a discrete design on my own board, it's probably going to take up more space than even the PCB and definitely take up more space than the SIP module. So when you have really small designs, these can come in handy. Faster time to market. You don't have to worry about complicated RF design or testing. Um, you don't need dedicated RF engineers either. The fact that you know this is done, you're putting it down, you're really focusing on this with your typical embedded uh, engineers and software design. And of course, that means lower upfront design costs. You're not spending a lot of time on RF design, testing, and going through certification, which actually can be complex. We do all that, you know, Silicon Labs, we know these parts, we've designed them, um, we have great staff here. So we've optimized these designs and can provide in many or most cases better performance than you can get by uh, doing an SOC. Give you an example, if I, I talked about the PCB module and the sensitivity at minus 106, um, if you look at our sensitivity of our SOC, we spec it at minus 105.0. Uh, 105.4. The reason for that is we have to spec the device and test it with some margin to accumulate or uh, counter for difference in designs as other people put these on their own designs. With this module, we know what it is. So we were able to optimize specifically for this form factor and get the best performance out of the device. And then of course, one thing you may not think about, but it does also eliminate RF matching component procurement risk. And what I mean by that is there's certain components, especially around the RF match, um, that you really can't second source easily because it changes uh, how the RF performs and it may impact our performance or even worse, it may impact your regulatory certifications. So you don't have to worry about that either. So, you know, these modules have a lot of advantages to them and really speed your time to market and lower your upfront cost. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Kurt. Hey, thanks, Matt. Um, you know, Matt gave an amazing overview of this new module, this new technology that Silicon Labs has provided. And, you know, they work closely with us and our team as we did our uh, put it on a, a thing plus uh, format or format. So really, we've taken the uh, MGM 240P module and placed it on our standard uh, thing plus uh, board format and added some of the features we're doing with our latest capabilities. But you know, it supports all the uh, 802.15.4 connectivity, as Matt outlined, Matter, Zigbee, OpenThread, BLE, you know, there's Matter IoT. We have um, a standard uh, SparkFun Quick Connector, um, so you can connect to, you know, hundreds of devices we have. We have LiPo support. We added a fuel gauge, so in the software, you can detect your battery level. Um, it's, our, again, our standard format. We have a micro SD card on the bottom, and it really just follows along with what we do at SparkFun, is bringing very advanced technology um, into a very easy to use at small um, and convenient uh, footprint. Um, you know, you know we, our team really works uh, closely with the Silicon Labs team on software and hardware on this. You know, our Thing Plus is a very small board and we put a lot on this board um, to get this out. And uh, I think it's one of the more dense Things Pluses we've done. And, uh, but we're excited to get this to the market. And we think a lot of people will be able to use this to develop and experiment with matter develop new devices and bring them to market. Next slide. Great, thanks. So yeah. I think now we'll step into oh. a demo. Hello, I'm Martin Lucker from Silicon Labs. In this video, I'll be giving you a preview of the SparkFun Thing Plus MGM240P board. 
This board is really great for developing Matter applications, thanks to the wireless multi-protocol processor that we have in the module. This will let you use both Bluetooth and also IEEE 802.15.4 based networks, like Thread, that's used in Matter. The SparkFun Thing Plus board is fully integrated into Simplicity Studio, which is our IDE suite for developing applications. With the board connected, uh, you can get some information about the board. Um, and you can also see we have lots of documentation available um, to help you, application notes, user guides, quick start guides, reference manuals. And there's also a whole suite of tools that can be used to help you develop your application and fine tune it. We also have a suite of example projects and demos that can be used with the board. So let's take a look at one of these now. Let's look at the iBeacon example. So here we can create a new project. We simply click create to create the project. Uh, we make sure we're happy with the project name and click finish. And this will then go ahead and create a project for us to compile and run on the board. We can build the project very quickly by selecting it in the Project Explorer. And once it's built, we can find a binary and easily flash it into the Spark from board. So now we flash the application. Let's see what it does in practice. With the firmware running on our Spark from board, I can use Silicon Labs EFR Connect application on my mobile phone to scan and discover Bluetooth devices operating in the vicinity. Here we can see that we've found the iBeacon being transmitted by the Spark from board, and we can see the various pieces of information that are being transmitted on here, such as the version numbers, the data in the beacon itself, uh, and UUIDs as well for the application. We'll be working with SparkFun to roll out more example applications over time, and you'll be able to find Matter applications as well. So we hope you enjoyed the video, and we're really excited to be working with SparkFun on this new Matter development board. Hello. And, and just to you know, let, let everybody know, we have a Matter giveaway. We're going to give some of these boards away. Um, so on the screen now is a QR code, um, or below is the link the QR code points to. It's basically sparkfun.com slash matter underscore giveaway. Um, go there, register, and um, you know we'll do a drawing. And if you're selected, we'll mail you a board in a nice red SparkFun box. All right, I think that wraps it up. So let's. Uh, awesome. I think we're going to open this up for Q and A. I think so. Let's. Shall we uh, head back to the QR code? If that's all right, let's give people a a good chance to uh, to <clears> enter <throat> and scan the code. I've also pasted it in the uh, chat, so if anyone uh, can't use the QR code for whatever reason, they should be able to access it there. So that was just an awesome, awesome presentation. Thank you both so so much. You know, as a smart home user myself, I really can't wait for matter to come along and for mass adoption of matter um you know it's a it's a real game changer and it's great to see how um you know arm technology is being used and you guys are uh, using this and how it's built pretty much on arm so it's it's awesome to see so thank you so so much for that presentation and kirk i understand on uh spark fan side i heard there was uh, and i see a comment in the q a so i hope this is accurate that spark fan recently celebrated uh, their uh, 20th anniversary is that correct it's 20 years that of is fun 20 years of spark fun it's hard to believe um it uh, it goes i've been there on five, five and a half years but uh, it goes by quickly and um, you know we we're doing some events this year around that um i know our founder nate who's very active active at spark fun is just uh, as amazing as everybody else um and uh yes thanks for pointing that out 20 years only you know maybe 20 30 40 more to go absolutely let's many more many many more to go. many, many so, more to go absolutely exactly exactly so amazing no thank you so much and and talk about this the things plus matter board right i'm i want to get my hands on one of these uh, obviously i'm not going to enter the giveaway when can i get my hands on one when's it available is it available well, well, now that's, that, 
it's not available now. We're waiting. The, the software is getting kind of finished up. We wanted to wait till, you know, it can really, um, it's fully integrated. It's in beta testing right now. And uh, the schedule I've seen is the, the, the board will release kind of late February, uh, maybe early March, but soon. And then you can go to sparkfun.com and order order your board. Exactly. Amazing. So I, I'll be uh, I'll be first on that. I'll keep an eye out for it. This is awesome. Okay. So I want to get doing this myself and, uh, you know, <laughs> play around with matter. It's great. So no, thank you again so much for that. Absolutely. Um, let's go to some of the questions and thanks for sending them all in. I know we've got some being answered as well uh, as they as they come in. So I'll do my best to to get through those. If you want any particular question to be asked first, please upvote it. And uh, that's generally the way I'll go is I'll do the top voted questions first and then work the way down. And of course, do get your questions in. We've got a good 10, 15 minutes or so uh, for for this. So uh, let's go to the top question from Tom. What would you say is the incentive for manufacturers to make an implementation of theirs matter compatible? And he lists an example of, of Philips here. You know, what's the real kind of incentive about matter that gives them uh, that gives manufacturers the incentive to make something interoperable. You know, why is, why does, I guess the kind of crux of the question is, why does matter matter? If I'm reading that correctly, Tom, um, but you know, why is this so different? Why is this a game changer? Do you feel, I guess, Matt first and then Kirk, if you want to, to take it as well on, on your perspective. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely chime in on that. I think one of the things we're seeing from manufacturers, especially for ones that have to develop something a little different for different ecosystems is it simplifies uh, what they're doing. Again, I think, you know, Slag is a great example. Um, I have a, a Slag lock at my house. It is Z-Wave, but I could buy that same device in Zigbee, that same device in Bluetooth, that same device on uh, Wi-Fi. And so it really it simplifies them. And the reason they did that is they were trying to tie in with different ecosystems, whether it was, you know, Alexa, uh, the Alexa, you know, Apple, whatever it might be. So that's their incentive is to really try to work more across ecosystems without having different wireless technologies uh, in there. And that's really the key. Now, it doesn't mean they're all going to go down that path. You know, some of them may have a pretty good following. Uh, for example, all my bulbs in the house are uh, Philips Hue which is uh, for the most part Zigbee. They support Zigbee and Bluetooth, but you know, maybe they'll stay with what they want to do. But most of the times manufacturers want to do this for simplicity and to address more ecosystems out there. Yeah, and I would just I completely agree with Matt is it just, it simplifies from a man manufacturing standpoint, um, what protocols to support. And also from just a engineer developer standpoint, you know, what do I need to learn and grow and use <clears> in the future? Um, I can focus on one matter. It, it's like um, IP technology, UDP and all that internet technology that was very exotic back when I was a young engineer. Um, but we all unified on, on one thing to really grow that infrastructure out and move on to bigger and better things. Um, so, and then from a manufacturer standpoint, from a smartphone standpoint, we're excited that uh, maybe this is the protocol we support in the future and then bring larger dev boards and ecosystems around matter. Awesome. Thank you both so much. And um, Kirk, coming back to you on for Spark Fun um, for the Thing Plus Matter board, can you share the approximate uh, cost? How much is that going to cost? Are you able to share the price yet or will that be announced in February? It will be announced later. Um, I I want to say it's roughly around what our current Thing Plus boards are. I don't have the actual final pricing that's still being worked out. Um, it's not going to be hundreds of dollars. It's probably in the 20 to the $30 range. Um, but they're working through the details now, um, all the people with lots of spreadsheets. Exactly. Amazing. Thank you, Kirk. And of course, you know, we've got the, the giveaway as well. So make sure you uh, enter that as well. And uh, let's come to the next question from Philip. Uh, so the 2.4 gigahertz airwaves can be quite cluttered and quite jammed in large cities. Uh, for example, here in New York City. It's great to have you joining us from New York City. Uh, is the matter protocol sensitive to interference? Could you use five gigahertz instead? Um, Matt, do you able to take that one? Yeah, so I mean that depends on the technology you're using. So uh, for uh, matter over thread, it is 2.4 gigahertz only. Uh, but th really, this is a pretty proven technology in 2.4 gigahertz. These are very low data rate applications. They're not sending a lot of data, um, so they could find time over the air. And and also, we've done a lot of things. I talked earlier about some things around coexistence. Uh, we've done a lot of things on coexistence that could um, enhance that as well. And when you talk about coexistence, there's two things. There's one you talked about, you know, just 
everything being in the air. I'm in an environment that has a lot of Wi-Fi, but there's also co-location where I have a device like a hub or a gateway that has all these devices inside. And that's really where you get the, the worst um, interference. And there what we do is we have ways to communicate to the other radios in there to have times where we can get slots, et cetera. So overall, it's proven to be very robust. I think a great example is, you know, at CES, we actually showed a Matter demo there in that environment with all the Wi-Fi. We were showing both Wi-Fi and Thread and everything worked fine. Wi-Fi, of course, has a five gigahertz option. Uh, so you could do that. 2.4, though, is focused for Thread. Wi-Fi will be 2.4 or five gigahertz. Brilliant. Thank you, Matt. And uh, questions come in on the board, uh, Thing Plus Matter board. The board seems to have uh, FM32 MCU and the MG24 module. Why is that? Was, could you repeat the question? The board, yeah, sure. The board seems to have an <clears throat> EFM32 MCU and the MG24 module. Why right. So we, we, you know, that's a good question. We added the, the dev um, that uh, the MCU for uh, JTAG support. There's a Sager connection for development. Um, so it makes it easy to plug into Simplicity Studio. And you, you don't, you're not just getting printouts of like serial printouts. You can actually do full debugging um, within there. So it's a full debug stack. So it's not, not uh, like a, a simple Arduino um, type development board. It's a full development stack. So there's that extra processor on there. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. And are you going yeah. to do a micro mod version that's just coming from Craig? Oh, that's a good question. We, we're um, we're going to get this to market and then we'll do discussions with our friends at Silicon Labs and see about doing something else beyond this. Um, there's more matter coming in the future. And we definitely want to get that into our MicroMod ecosystem. And is it this processor or maybe someone else from uh, Silicon Labs? Um, but yes, there, I guess we will do something on MicroMod. Uh, right now, I, I just said that. I know people back at Sparkfun are now saying, oh, oh okay, I guess we got to do that. <laughs> You've yeah, um, exactly. You committed now, Kirk. <laughs> I committed. Um, You've got you on the airwaves. Absolutely. But it makes sense in how we do that ecosystem. You know, it's kind of you can put different capabilities together um, and bring different protocols. You know, ideally, you could use a couple of boards and do a, a border router or some other kind of technology. Um, I'd love to see this with Ethernet. I'm an old old guy, I like Ethernet POE um, and, and make that uh, for kind of a gateway. But yes, we will, we will do something in the future. I'm not sure if it'd be this module, um, but something definitely in the future. Amazing. Thank you, Kirk. Um, mm -hmm. Matt, on your side, uh, just seen a request. Is there a GitHub link, for instance? Uh, is it github.com slash silicon lab slash matter that they could uh, access and find out a bit more about this? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's it. Um, I'll have to look it up and, and do that. But there's, like I said, there's a couple of GitHub links. You can go to the CSA GitHub, but I'd really recommend that you go to the Silicon Labs Matter GitHub because that's just a little more robust. We've done uh, more testing on that. And then, of course, you could use the Simplicity Studio and use the GSDK as well. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And um, one of the questions has uh, come up on, <clears throat> and actually it's something I was wondering in terms of if you've got a, let's say you've got a Matter product, um, do you still need to go through the testing with different ecosystem providers <clears throat> to do that? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's it's sort of yes and no. What I mean by that, you're going to have to go through testing to get the matter certification. But if you want to use the works with Alexa badge, for example, you would need to go through their specific ecosystem testing as well. So you don't need to do it for the matter certification. But if you want to use that specific ecosystem badge, whether it be works with Alexa, works with Samsung smart things, you would need to go for through testing with that specific ecosystem. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And in terms of just broader ecosystem support um, and ecosystem players, I know you shared a, an early sli a slide earlier. Do we have any more kind of information that we can share on who's announced support for Matter in the ecosystem out there? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's great because that's one of the big questions is, you know, when is this going to be rolled out? When can I get to it? And in general, you know, we've seen um, a 
adoption or you know uh messaging from those guys at amazon apple google smart things comcast that they all plan to support this and some of them were ahead for example google's probably in the in the lead we do have a good uh community uh document that's out there that talks about where everybody is today and that'll be updated as things go on so i think i could provide that um uh, link here in the chat Actually, I cannot do that. I don't know if you can do that on your end. It sure, won't sure. Let me get it. that for you. Let me uh, let me do that. This is uh, some of the perks of being the host, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me uh, get that sent over to everyone. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. Perfect. No worries. No worries. Yeah, dude, go in and check that out. And there's a whole bunch of resources uh, there on Silicon Labs website. And you can obviously just search on, on Matter to find out a bit more. So... We've got a couple more minutes uh, of questions coming in. Uh, <clears throat> let's have a look. There's a question that's come in on how is Google's open matter implementation? How does it relate to this? And does it work on the matter platform? Yeah, so absolutely. I think if you'll look at the, the document that we just talked about, you'll see what Google's doing. Um, they've actually already enabled uh, matter on like the uh, Nest Hub second gen, the Max. Uh, and that's for like matter over thread and the matter over Wi-Fi. They even have a larger list. So that is, um, you know, they do have some stuff on GitHub. It is uh, supporting matter. And again, they have op already opened up some of their devices to matter. So you can get them in today and be able to go out the door supporting matter. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. And um, yeah, so we've got, as I say, a couple of minutes for questions before we wrap up. So if you've got a question that's burning, do get it in and try and get it um Let's try and get it upvoted on the on the platform. Um, Kirk, on your side, the on, on SparkFun side, are the SparkFun Quick boards supported by the MG twenty forty uh, two forty? Sorry, uh, thing plus. Hey, you know that's a great question. So most of our Quick boards, the software um, is in Arduino, um, and Arduino is not supported on this board right now. So what we're doing over time, and, and for those who are paying attention in the details, we're actually developing our um, quick drivers to be platform independent, so C++ only. And so we have a select few that you can plug in now, and we're going to grow that out over time so that you know our goal is to be able to plug any of our quick boards into this board or any other board, um, and you'll be able to use it. So we're getting there. We're working on it. We, I know Silicon Labs has done some experiments with this and done this um, kind of a prototype. And we're continuing to develop that software out. And again, as you look at our new quick drivers, new devices underneath the a very thin Arduino layers, a C++ uh, <clears throat> extractor layer um, to support that. Amazing. Thank you, Kirk. And mm -hmm. one final quick question from Daniel. There was mention of detecting a security event, such as stealing keys and then being able to brick the device. Can you unbrick the device? Or if the manufacturer decides to brick a whole line of products, could can the consumer repurpose the device? <laughs> So, yeah, make sure I'm off mute. So for our device, no. So that would be sort of the last resort you would do. We have um, on this device, we have what's called a puff key. And that is basically something that's generated on uh, reset and that is kept in RAM. Basically what we do is we kill that puff key and therefore the, the device is forevermore dead. It won't even boot at that point. Again, that would be you know the most extreme situation. Uh, the developer has control if they wanted to go that far, but once it's bricked, it's bricked. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. That's great. Thank you so much. And I think we are just at the top of time. So thank you all so, so much for your questions. Please do feel free to reach out to myself or uh, I guess Matt and uh, Kirk, if you've got any other questions on this, be happy to to help answer them. I know we had a, a quite a lot come in, so it's great to be able to answer them. And thanks to colleagues on the call as well who helped answer some of the well over two dozen questions that we got through in the space of 20 minutes we were on fire so <laughs> and thank you you know matt and kirk for an awesome presentation great demo and really interesting insights into what is matter the uh, silicon labs implementation and together with spark fund the things plus matter board it's just fantastic and it's all great to see this running on arm and yet another example yes. of how the arm tech talks is the place for the latest in trends technologies and best practices so audience, if you like what you see uh, today, then please make sure you head to arm.com slash tech talks to register for our next tech talk, streaming analytics next week, and then the week after another tech talk on matter from Arm and Canonical. So make sure you check that out. Uh, last chance to quickly get that QR code, scan it now, get into the giveaway uh, before we finish the webinar today. 
And uh, all that remains for me to say is thank you, audience, for joining. And thank you, Matt and Kirk, for a fantastic presentation. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for Absolutely. having me.